Hello all, this is Inexplicable Shorts, my name is Brandon Utstrom, and today we have Downtrodden, wherein a man's car breaks down, setting off a wild chain of events. On hand, we have our biggest ensemble to date, with me as Tom, the sarcastic unbothered driver whose tire is flat, Rico Brooks voicing Jim, a troubled citizen, Adam Robinson as Arnold, a concerned bystander, John Bequin as the other Jim, an awkward tow truck driver, Michelle Casanova playing a policewoman, with the narration done by Jay Silver. This one I'm very excited about. So kick back, relax, and read along at inexplicableshorts.com. Without further ado, let's get into it. Tom lit a cigarette soon exhaling into the cold night air, envious of those commuting home. Come on, man, where are you at? He complained. Others began to beep their horns, irate that an entire lane was now backlogged. I don't know what you want me to do. Assholes. His phone then began to ring. Hey man, you coming? Yeah, I'm sorry. Kinda lost my way a bit here. The tow truck driver sheepishly admitted. You're... lost. It's the Golden Gate Bridge. I know, I... Jesus. So where are you now? Just moved here from Philly. It's my first day on the job. Well, technically yesterday was, but... Tom closed his eyes out of frustration as the man continued to ramble. That was... uh, orientation. I I understand. You do? Oh, I appreciate that. Why not take a job that requires knowing a city you just moved to? Um... Jim, was it? Yes, sir. He affirmed in a defeated tone. Why not Uber on the weekends? With the leftover money, maybe we can catch a football game. There was no response. Just head back home. Don't get lost. Have a good day. The call ended. (sighs) Fuck me. Hiya, little girl. Sorry, mom, for the language. A woman walked past, holding her daughter's ears. Little late to be out, isn't it? School night. She then shrieked in horror. What? It is. I'm not the one who... Ahead was a dark figure, rearing to jump off the bridge. Oh, get down, you idiot. Stay back! The man yelled, his voice echoing across the seascape. I'm going head first. No, you're not. Tom headed over, becoming part of what was an increasingly large crowd, most of whom were recording the ordeal. Like hell I'm not. The fact that you haven't done it yet suggests otherwise. Stop wasting everyone's time. Don't be an asshole, pal. Another guy called out. He turned his attention. Come on, buddy. Let's talk about this. What's your name? Jim. Please tell me you don't drive a tow truck, because it's not that serious. I'm an investment banker. Why would a tow truck driver be wearing an expensive suit? Hot date? Tom could feel the group's collective ire. Very funny, he retorted. My name's Arnold. I'm a friend, all right? Hmm. You don't look like an Arnold. Ignore this jackass. Walk me through why we're here, man. I'm gonna go with... he's depressed. The wife left me. Well, fucked my boss. And of course, the judge ended up siding with her. Got custody of our kids. What kind of judge would okay that? Arnold questioned. We work finance at a major firm. Do business with a lot of judges and politicians, if you catch my drift. (laughs) The guy's dirty. Tom scoffed. He has kids! Head. He quipped under his breath. Look, Jay, I've got two daughters. Can I come over there and show you? Don't take another step. He grew frantic, now hugging the support beam. Okay, okay, no problem. Hey, they're nine and six. He doesn't want to hear about your kids, not when he just lost his. Move. Several people gasped as Tom pushed forward, soon inches away. You sound like an asshole, Jim. Man, what the fuck are you doing? Being honest. Which is more than half of you guys are doing. Great work uploading this for clicks on the internet. That's what's wrong with the world today. Everyone's fake. Doesn't give you the right to be a prick. He's right. Jim admitted. Maybe part of me is doing this for attention. 
but it's all superficial and none of you really care. Hate to say I told you all so, but... Deborah cheating on me, losing Stevie and little Deb. It wasn't the start of my misfortune. Some of us are just meant to lose. Well, you had me for a second there. Tom chortled. But not for long. Man, enough already. Let him talk. Thank you. He glared at Arnold, who was shaking his head. Where did I lose you? Jim asked. The part about some of us being meant to lose. You know I'm right. Wasn't what you said. More so how. That pathetic drawl. God. No wonder Deborah left. She sounded hot, too. Uh, that's enough. I'm gonna call the police. Arnold stated. No! He let one arm free, now dangling. You idiot. I'm not about to sit here and watch a man die because you have no empathy. And is that your piece of shit car down the way? The other Jim got lost. What? If he dies, it'll be your fault. You know what I think? I think that you are just as miserable as he is. Arnold walked up to the pair, soon in Tom's face. Oh yeah, I know your type. Real smooth. Always has to have the last word. Pretends not to give a damn about other people. Pushes them away with his silly little jokes. But where does that leave you, hmm? Alone. And deep down, you can't stand it. You're nothing but a scared little boy. As touching as that was, I'm going to get back to our friend here. Okay, Chief? He quipped, patting the side of his face. Touch me again, asshole. Where was I? He turned back around. Ah, yes. Look, some people do lose. Stay back! Actually, we all do at some point. Some more than others. But it's how we handle losing that matters. Your wife, the uh, ex, this is on her. Right? And little Johnny and Susie... Stevie and little Deb. Jim corrected. Whatever. So they might be brainwashed into hating their dad. It might be years until you even see them again. But sooner or later, everyone's true colors come out. Not all of what our friend Arnold here had to say was that far off. I do push people away. Can't seem to make any... Relationships last. Never been married or settled down, let alone have kids. God, am I that transparent? Huh, <laughs> yes. Arnold chirped. Maybe I'm afraid it'll go horribly, like with Deborah. But you at least tried, huh? So what if it didn't work out? One day, those kids are going to realize what a whore and a bitch their mother is. And guess who they'll turn to? You need to be there when that day comes. Forget me, us. Do it for them. Tom reached out, slowly offering up his hand. After a few tense moments of exchanging glances, Jim started to tear up. Police sirens then started blaring. Several officers rushed to the scene. Sir, hey, don't do anything crazy. One of them ordered. All right, everyone disperse. Let him breathe. No, don't. I had it under control. Sir, step away. We'll take it from here. That's not going to happen. Tom stood defiantly. Sir, get back in your car, now. It's busted. Dead battery, I think. Oh, so you're the reason for the traffic jam? Couldn't push it down the road, huh? Right, because that would go wonderfully in the middle of rush hour traffic on the world's busiest bridge. Silly me thought that this man barely clinging to life was a priority. Not to mention my own. It pains me to say this, but he nearly talked Jim down, all right? Arnold pleaded. Did you call them? No, I swear. Guess it could have been any of these useless morons. Look, Jim, this change is nothing. Everything I said is still true. Take my hand. He again offered it forward. Thank you, Tom. The world could stand to be a more honest place. Yeah, yeah, you can buy me a beer after when men with guns aren't staring at us. Come on. I killed Deborah. Followed her home after the trial earlier today. Right in front of the kids. I just saw red. But you were right, you know? About handling loss. Really hit home. If only we'd met sooner. He leapt backwards off the ledge. Tom grew pale, 
staring on in horror as chaos ensued, seemingly in slow motion. Are you or do you know someone who is depressed, perhaps considering suicide? Contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. It's 800-273-8255. One more time, that's 800-273-8255. It only takes a second and could make a world of difference. They answer the phones 24 hours a day. Obviously, my character Jim had very dark reasons for wanting to end his life. But it goes without saying that most real-world cases aren't similar. Good people unfortunately struggle every day, perhaps unbeknownst to us. So please be kind. But that'll do it for this episode. Until next week, everyone, we're out.